Welcome to Annex Cloud Market Movers. Uh, this next discussion, I'm so excited to welcome Rob Garf. Rob is the VP of Strategy and Insights at Salesforce. Rob, welcome to the discussion. Thanks, Al. It's uh, really a pleasure to be with you today. Wonderful. Rob, if we may start with you just kind of explaining what your role at Salesforce is, maybe we start there. Yeah, sure, of course. Well, uh, you know, I came to Salesforce by way of the demand war acquisition about four years ago, where I spent about five years prior. And I now am in the retail and consumer goods practice. And I have this fun job of really being chartered with staying out in the industry and understanding where the market is going. We do that through a lot of data and research. We look at all the data flowing through Commerce Cloud, we bubble that up, and it really becomes the de facto standard of what's happening in digital. And then we supplement that with primary and secondary research. And we're able to have fun and insightful conversations like this and with our customers and even internally as we think about our products and solutions. Wonderful, Robin. I've seen you speak over the years about amazing shifts in the commerce and digital space. I'm very excited to have that discussion with you today. And in the, you know, starting things off, one of the things that I think I've seen float around is this massive shift on digital transformation. Obviously, we're all sort of in the middle of it. And specifically on the commerce side, since you mentioned sort of that big shift of people buying on commerce in different industries that weren't as commerce enabled before, specifically overall numbers showing that we went from like five to 15, it took us a decade almost to get there and 15 to 27 or give or take around that, that uh, sort of piece in less than three months. And that's, that's a massive, you know, sort of shift that would have taken us probably another decade, maybe at least five more years to get to. And so we've sort of, um, you know, transgress that time very, very quickly. You know, what's your take on that shift towards digital and what's what's driving it and, and, and how will that work out? Yeah, you know, it for me and for most of us in the industry, it was really a tale of two cities, if you think about it. On one hand, you had brick and mortar traffic, really flatlining with the shuttering of doors given COVID-19. But on the other hand, we saw an unprecedented surge in digital. In fact, for the second quarter, given our shopping index at Salesforce, we saw a 71% increase year over year. I mean, to put it in perspective, if you're getting to like 12, 13, 14% year over year increases for the quarter, you're doing pretty darn well. And we anticipate this continuing and it's really created this whole new baseline of behavior. And it's not just for the traditional categories that you'd normally as a consumer buy online. I mean, it's a sample size of one, but my mother-in-law who has a pre-existing lung condition, she's not going in a grocery store anytime soon. She would normally do that. She want to touch and feel the produce, make sure it's fresh. And she's not going to do that. And again, that behavior is not going to snap right back, but rather creating a whole new baseline. And it creates a whole new dynamic. You know, I have one customer of ours who put it this way, digital used to be an outpost for the store. And now the store is just a component to the overall digital strategy. So we've seen such an acceleration over the last three, four, five months to digital, both for consumers and for retailers and brands. Yeah, that's wonderful. And, and you know, one of the things I continually hear from, from our customers is it's almost like Black Friday every day, right? And, and so to be able to sustain that, not just from a, technolo in a technology perspective, but also from an operational perspective is an interesting sort of challenge. So my, my next sort of piece uh, to just understand from you is two things. One, what are retailers and brands doing to kind of position themselves for success um, you know, especially with this, this massive, amazing growth that they're seeing on the digital side of things, uh, while still seeing, still seeing challenges on the store side of things in many cases. And secondly, what do you foresee, up, you know, in the upcoming holidays? Will we keep up with sort of this massive shift or as COVID-19 starts kind of getting a little bit better and then we start getting maybe a vaccine come out or something, will that sort of go back to where it was? Yeah, it's a, you know, great question. And the way I'd categorize it, Al, is I've seen really this scrappiness over the last several months where retailers would accelerate their digital strategy by five years. You know, I had one CIO tell me that their CEO credited the technology organization from moving their three-year roadmap to three weeks. That, that's no joke. And so the trick is, Al, moving from scrappy 
to scale. So we're doubling down on digital for sure, as we talked about before. And again, we're seeing it in a lot of non-essential categories as well. We saw a seismic shift and surge for non-essential products in the Q1, Q2 timeframe. We're also seeing this move to contactless engagement, whether that's payment, whether that's service, and certainly fulfillment. We're hearing story after story about curbside. And we saw that last holiday in terms of those who succeeded having buy and line pick of a store. In the second quarter, those who had BOPIS, buy and line pick of a store, saw a 127% increase year over year. That's two times, by the way, those that didn't have it. But we're also seeing this move to unleashing the store associates and untethering them from, well, the store, really making them virtual concierge, virtual assistants, being able to engage the consumer. Because you know, Alan, you know this better than anybody. It's one thing to work on attraction, but it's another thing on retention. And consumers have so much choice now. So building loyalty, building advocacy in this time is becoming so important. So I think the next part was around holiday, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so holiday, we see some of the same, right? So we actually just announced our holiday predictions this week. And some people say, well, you know, it's the dog days of summer. Why are you releasing your holiday predictions? Well, while consumers might not be thinking about holiday just yet, the retailers and brands are. They're in the throes of planning. You brought up that percentage shift, right? It took us 20 years to get to 15%. We're anticipating over the holiday season that 30% of sales will be digitally. So this is going to put a huge strain operationally, as you put it, right, in terms of fulfillment. We actually are anticipating that the traditional last mile delivery, the carriers, the FedExes, the UPS, the DHLs, the world, they're going to run out of capacity. They're going to run out of capacity. They're already a huge strain on the system, and it's only going to be bigger. Uh, we also see, by the way, a pulling forward of demand. There's rumblings that Prime Day is going to be at the beginning part of October. And if that comes to fruition, that's going to put it smack dab right in the middle of uh, really the beginning part of the holiday season. So retailers are planning now for not only attraction, but also retaining their most loyal customers in new and creative ways. And again, thinking about how to do that in a digital context. That's great. And, you know, one of the things since you mentioned sort of on the retention and loyalty side, you know, what we saw, uh, we, we pulled out a study from back in 2008. And one of the things we're trying to do is learn from, from a retention perspective, what happened in the last recession or the recession before it, yeah. and, and what sort of what we can learn from it. And one of the studies that was done by CMO Council and Catalina Marketing back in 2009 for consumers in 2008 and their behavior they studied about 685, or sorry, 32 million um, customers, wow. which is a massive number, over 685 brands that they shopped on in 2008 and compared that behavior versus 2007. And what they found was 52% of their loyal customers defected in 2008 from 2007. So if you had 100 loyal customers in 2007, 52 were no longer loyal with you and bought from you in 2008. And so that's a massive shift because usually that's not the rate of defection any good brand likes to have. And these brands, by the way, were the, the best, like the Samsung, the Apple, the Pepsi, and the Cokes, and so on in the world. And so what we're, we're predicting is that shift will probably happen again as consumers' spending habits change, as they're looking for lower cost alternatives, as they're looking for maybe a, a digital way of, of fulfillment that, that that brand may or may not have in place. Uh, and, and so all these drivers may, may change that behavior uh, from a loyalty perspective, a retention perspective, you know, for, uh, with sort of the challenging environment that always comes to the forefront. You know, the first thing I, I, I was thinking about when, when this sort of struck is, is how can we help our customers stay successful? Um, and and every, every sort of, uh, you know, leader is probably thinking about the same thing as well. What's your take on retention and loyalty and the importance of that in the upcoming years as a part of that digital shift and transformation? Yeah, well, I mean, this has been something that's, talked about in the business for a long time. Right? Sam Walton certainly talked about it and his mantra was all around, the customer always has a choice and they could choose another brand instantaneously. But you know, here now where we are with COVID and so much digital, consumers have more choice and access than ever before. And they can make moves to and from brands in an instant. So it's more important than ever for brands to create that emotional connection. And a lot of it has to do with leveraging the data. 
that the a consumer is knowingly providing about themselves in exchange for some value. And that value can be personalization. It could be automation. In many cases, right, it's convenience and safety. I just think about our, our joint customer, Elf Cosmetics, and what they're doing as a traditional D2C brand. I mean, there's a whole new battleground, if you think about it, for the consumer and their attention. And they're reaching out to the consumer's wherever and whenever they want to shop, whether that's on social, whether that's on messaging platforms, or even in the retailer location, which was this area which was oftentimes not available or accessible to the brand themselves. So, and maybe you can expand on this a little bit, Al, but I love what they're doing in terms of the ability for the consumer to take a picture or have a digital receipt sent to Elf so that Elf can have a broader view of how they're shopping and then understand their preferences and their profile to build that 360 degree view of that customer to therefore provide a relevant and personalized experience. And to me, that is so important as we think about differentiating and again, thinking about how to provide this convenience and safety in the digital world. But you know, obviously Al, a lot more about what's happening at Elf. Maybe you can expand on it a little bit. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, I think at Elf, one of their, they've got two major channels, right? They've got the digital e-commerce channel uh, powered by Salesforce, and they've got sort of a massive distribution channel through retailers. And, and what they're trying to do is reach out to those customers directly in a way to kind of have those customers that are buying at a retailer to join their loyalty program by scanning their receipts and bringing them into that mix of customers. And especially now with brands that are trying to go to to digital now that may not have a presence there or may have a smaller presence and, and are really trying to grow that direct to customer or direct to consumer sort of presence, this is a massive shift where you can access the customers you have in retail to help you drive and understand those customers' behaviors and help them buy direct from you potentially as well. Um, and, and, and so that, that is one of the, the, the big sort of pieces that will help you drive that, that massive shift towards digital and direct uh, that's happening. Um, and, and with that said, you know, I know you're working on some amazing initiative that's coming up. Uh, you know, I, I, I would love to sort of understand how you foresee that initiative making a, a difference in how executives think about retail overall as a whole. So uh, if you may tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate you uh, asking about that. And I know you're very passionate about this topic. And that's what we're calling becoming retail. And what it is, is, I mean, let's face it we're all going through some level of digital transformation. It's only accelerated as we were just talking about given COVID-19. And, you know, unlike what some pundits like to say, it's not just about, or it's not about the machines. It's about the people. It's about the people of retail, right? If you think about becoming, it's a real choice word in terms of it's aspirational. It shows movement. It shows innovation going from one place to another. And retail for me, who's been, in and around retail for more than 25 years. It's not just a career, but it's, it's my identity. It's my passion. It's my community, right? We see each other a couple times a year, or at least we used to out at various events, and, and it's a coming home party for me and many others. So what we want to do, given it's about the people, is really understand the people, understand the leaders, get inside the head of retailers and understand their career path, their aspirations, how they got to where they are and where the future might be going. And we'll be doing that by talking to a lot of different retailers, having a steady drumbeat of their thoughts and their points of view. We're really just the curators, if you will, of this community. And if we do our job right, our goal is at some point it will end up in a book. We want to leave some sort of artifact for the industry to provide a blueprint of what this thing has looked like for the last many decades and what it could look like for the time to come. So I, I appreciate you asking. Again, it's, a, it's been a personal and professional goal of mine to really put a stamp on the industry and this is our way to do it. Well, that's wonderful. And you know, I'm, I'm looking personally looking forward to see what people, people say because you know, as much as we see opportunity coming up, there's a massive challenge from an execution standpoint that's ahead of us. For, for many of the retailers and many of the executives at, at these companies. And for me, 
I, I love the choice of words. For, for me, the becoming part is aspirational. It's, it's exciting. It's something we can look forward to. Uh, and, and, you know, retail, sort of that, that, that brand shift I talked about where they're all trying to become retail. They're all trying to become, you know, sort of the direct-to-customer sort of aspect. And so, so that, that those words really sort of uh, parlay where, where, the, where the industry is going. So I'm really excited to see what your discussions look like and, and what you learn from these executives. And, and, and eventually, when you produce something all put together, I'm very excited to see what comes about with that. So congratulations on launching that initiative. I appreciate it. You know, two quick things to that, Al. One is you talked about retail. It's funny because I'm talking to actually executives across various industries at this point and retail being more of a verb or a strategy, right? Because everybody's looking to get closer to the customer and who better to learn from than retail. And you brought up execution. It's really interesting. We did one of our first interviews with a chief digital officer at a specialty apparel company. And, you know, I asked him, what are the important measures of success beyond, of course, financial? And he brought up the, these two words, uh, digital ready. And his point was the last couple of companies that he came from, he feels like he left it in a much better place to be digital ready than the time he came in. And that's because they're able to execute. They're able to be agile. They're able to be innovative and they're using digital as the backbone. So again, I, I appreciate your interest and your passion about it and certainly we'll stay close on it. Sounds great. Well, Rob, this was wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And, um, you know, thank you for sharing all the n numbers and insights that you've shared today. There's a lot of value in this that I'm sure we will be able to kind of uh, share with, with everyone out there. Um, and for everyone else, if you want to see more such videos, please go to annexcloud.com slash market movers or follow us on hashtag AC Market Movers. Thank you, Rob. Bye for now. Take care. Be well. Bye.